tinfoil hat. Oh, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed, and, 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 and a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Welcome to tinfoil hat. We, 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 we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Are you ready to get your mind blown? Good morning, Swarm, and welcome to Tim Fall Hat. You know I am. You know I'm here to do. I'm here to rock. Joining me as always is the man, the myth, the legend, Xavier Guerrero. What's up? And on the ones and twos, Jay Nice, Johnny Woodard. Hey now. Hey guys. Uh, great show for you guys. I hope you guys will enjoy it. Not a lot of stuff to push right now. Uh, the big five zero zero. The big five hundred is getting finalized. Tickets hopefully will be on sale in the next couple days. Las Vegas, October 16th. That's a Saturday. Two shows. We got the 500th episode. Uh, and then on top of that, we also have stand-up comedy show after. So come get weird with us. Uh, if you want to see. I know we're going to get asked this. If they buy the one 500 ticket, do they go all three shows? Is it going to be individual? I know. I'm gonna I, there's this. only two shows at okay. this moment. Then that is it. And I have to figure that out. I think they're both separate shows, but we'll see right now. I got to figure that out. I'm not very good at this. I just started doing double shows, so I don't know what so to do. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Ask me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what else is there? A uh, T-shirts coming up. Man, go to TimFallHatTshirts.com. Check them out. Uh, we got a bunch of new ones about to pop up. Bunch of new ones, and I think you will enjoy Conspiracy Smoke shows up there. The ba This one's up there. I love this shirt. Yo, a big titty chick bought the Smoke Show shirt. Really? It looks great. How come I haven't seen this? I, I, I might have been, been a private DM, but they look great. Well, well show me it. All right, all right, got you. Well, you I got jerk, you. My bad. Dude? Oh, yeah, I should show this you. guy's huh? just <laughs> saving it for himself. <laughs> guys, I know some of you guys you know, can't get enough shows, sometimes two, maybe even three episodes a week is enough for you. Well, guess what? There is a ton of premium content on rockfin.com. R-O-K-F-I-N.com. You got uh, Conspiracy Social Club. You got Zero. You got Tim Full Hat Premium. You got the, the, the greatest of all time sports talk whenever we do that. You also have uh, Broken Sim First Look. And you got Xavier Guerrero's We Don't Smoke the, the same. same. Bang, bang, bang. Singing We Don't Smoke the Same. All for a low, low price of $10. All that. Most of the shows are two episodes a week. New Broken Simulation just dropped on YouTube, too. Check that out. And the children love it. Just go to YouTube.com slash Sam Tripoli. Yes. You can also get all of my free videos from all my free content. Just go to SamTripoli.com. SamTripoli.com. That's not all. Wait. There's more. <laughs> also, if uh, you know they keep nuking our discords, all you have to do is go to chat dot sam .com and join almost all my shows i think the only ones i don't doesn't have a chat in there is conspiracy social club and i will talk to them about setting that up but go there they'll never nuke it dude it's decentralized like a mofo so yeah uh so this is it anything else did i miss anything uh your opiates of the asses you haven't put, been pushing that those are great Thank you, dude. That's all available on there as well. Dates starting in September. I don't I don't really have anything in August, which I'm fine with. And yeah, that's about it. Guys, great show coming up. Johnny, you want to say it. something? No. no. Uh, great show. This is a great one. We got Isaac Weissett back for the 10th time. And we got Alex Kazami. And we are debating magic in modern society. Enjoy the show. Drink. From the of All right, here we go. Let's dance this forbidden dance, everybody. Uh, very excited. This gentleman, I believe, is making his... I, I think this might be the record for most appearances on the show. The big double digit, boy. <laughs> Ten appearances. <laughs> Please welcome the man, the myth, the legend. Isaac Weissip. Hi, everybody. Welcome back, bro. 
More more uh, stuff on the wall. Gradually, the wall grows with entertainment. Yeah, it's creeping with cool art. Yeah. yeah. Trying well, to build you, it all up. You have the uh, interesting map behind you. That Wasn't that the Q map they called it for a while? Yeah, that's the Great Awakening poster. Q's on there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, uh, so are you into the Great Awakening or are you not into the Great Awakening? Are you, you know, into the I, big old sleeping? Is that what you think we're getting into? <laughs> I, I think there was some Great Awakening going on with that Q thing. Uh, I disagreed with a lot of the Q stuff, uh, but a lot of the stuff they were talking about you know, it got people interested. So I think that is going to have some repercussions. I think that's going to snowball effect. A lot of people, a lot of people in my personal life would come up and talk to me about conspiracy stuff that I would have never have expected to come up and talk to me about. I like that. I I like that answer. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. And then also joining us on his second, his first appearance the second time, (laughs) Uh, the, look at those glasses making me think he's up to some shady ass shit right now. Ha, huh? this Mo- guy. Most, most appearances on the show without actually appearing on yeah, the show. Yeah, this guy says <laughs> the most appearances without appearing on the show. He's the author of Pop Magic, Alex Kazemi. How are you, buddy? What up, man? So nice to be here. So Again. excited to talk today. Thanks for coming on, buddy. What's new in your life? Nothing, man. It's fucking hot ass heat wave here in BC, in Vancouver. Really sucks. I don't like the heat. Don't like summertime. So that's really all going me on with either. me. I'm with this dude. What's that? I'm with him. I, I'm sick of the summer. Fuck well, it, that's I why you gotta get summer, summer, dude. Me I too. hate summer. Me too. I love summer. I no. love, but you know, I just want to move farther and closer to San Diego, dude. That's where it's at. Milder, yeah. Miami or San Diego, and I know Miami's humid, but those chicks make you forget about that. <laughs> right? They make you forget about that. So, uh, Alex, you know everybody knows Isaac. Uh, he's a legend uh, on this show, but a lot of people won't know you from your last non-appearance. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you got going on? Uh, yeah, I'm the author of a book called Pop Magic, has a foreword by Rose McGowan. It's a book about um, magic and alchemy and kind of unveils what people like Isaac have kind of always known about the fashion and music and entertainment industry and that, you know, a lot of people in power are practicing magic. And, you know, the most recent thing that happened in my life, um, kind of a flex is Madonna posted herself reading my book and she posted four Instagram stories about it, which kind of changed my life. And, um, I had no idea she was going to do that. And I had no idea she was going to caption Illuminati high priestess on the picture as well. So, so I'm processing everything with you guys. (laughs) So how, how do you interpret that? Because a lot of people think that Madonna has danced that dark dance. What is your thoughts on that? The thing is that's so interesting to me about her choosing that language and that wording is I have called myself in the media Illuminati Prince. So I feel like she must have, you know, kind of attached herself to what I was doing a little bit, which is so cool. But um, I don't think she's fucked with the dark side of magic. I think she's more on the positive side of magic, which is Kabbalah and the most advanced form of magic. Well, she has taught, she has tweeted before about you can't unsell your soul. I, I think I think uh, the the metaphor of selling your soul in, in Hollywood is is very accurate. Like as a it, see, like with Manson, you know, I think that is more applicable than with Madonna. You know what I mean? In what sense? Marilyn, I think he fucked with a lot of dark magic, and I know that for a fact, actually. So that so. It's just very interesting. You know, I don't know, Isaac, if you've seen this video at all about like people breaking down where all these kind of mid-level rappers and there's so many of them now with SoundCloud and Instagram and all that stuff. You know, so and at my age, it's not really my job to be have my finger on the pulse of like <laughs> the latest indie rappers. But, you know, rapper after rapper in his thing talking about selling their soul. And what is involved with that? So what are your thoughts on like Madonna, Isaac? I mean, you've done my show a lot. We've broken down Katy Perry, all the stuff on that. 
uh, all, all the people like her, but, uh, you know, uh, who was it? Katy Perry. Britney Spears. Britney Spears, Billie Eilish, like all the imagery with them. And, you know, so, and then I just want to say, like, when I think about me growing up, when I grew up, was growing up, ACDC, Metallica, Slayer, Ozzy, there was so much. Judas Priest. S Satan uh, imagery. It was it just that I was young and I just thought they were rallying against it? Or were they doing the exact same thing and we're just all being fucking hypocrites at this point? What's your thoughts, Isaac? Yeah, so the, the Faustian bargain idea, uh, obviously, I'm sure you guys have treaded over this material many times, so I won't go in depth on it. But, you know, you go back to like Robert Johnson, the blues singer, who literally said he made a deal with the devil at the crossroads that was corroborated by a friend of his at the time who said he in fact didn't have any guitar playing abilities at all before the, the, uh, the deal to sell his soul happened. Well, all this, and, and you talk about like the rockers from the eighties and like how it's sort of a shtick. And like, I think there's like everything in life. It's, it's, it's more complicated than, than just a surface black or white thing. I believe that, on, on one level, yes, it's a shtick that can get attention and, and you know, move numbers and all that. But on another level, I think it fits into this larger goal, this larger pursuit of ushering in this new world order, which we talked about the Great Awakening a second ago. That's what this is all about. That's what people are waking up to finally, that all the crazy conspiracy talk about this global government and this, like, mass population surveillance and control to the level of, you know, forcing certain things into your body. Uh, all this is unfolding right in front of us. And, and we see when we go through like the great reset talk and how these globalists are like, they're just obsessed with creating this new global religion and this, uh, this new spirituality that feeds into what I believe uh, being on, you know, it, and I've read Alex's book, right? there's a lot of overlap with like, I don't disagree with everything he's saying. I'm not like, I'm not like, Oh, Alex is worshiping Satan. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but like there's some elements of what he says that I like, like he said, he saw spring breakers 30 times. I wanted to ask him about that. Spring breakers is one of my favorite movies. Not a lot of people like that movie. I love that movie, but yeah. And I didn't know he's going to come through looking like a strip club DJ here with the mic. <laughs> yeah, so so cool. I like, dude, whenever I see a dude like that, I'm like, someone loves Coke. That's what I think right there. Right. <laughs> hey, Steph, what I was, there's a lot of blow and I, Hey dude, there was a time I was down with that. Hey, I was going to say, I think times have changed because when you grew up, it was Slipknot. It was like, oh, no, 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 I'm way before. Well, what, no, 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 but way before that, like it was like, the, it was dark, the Satan, it was Ozzy, all that. Now it's like Lady Gaga. It's in there, but it's like subliminal. It's okay. thrown in there subliminal. And with you, it was in your face. It was like, here's the Satan, here's the devil, here's Ozzy, well, Screamo. And with us, I didn't see that. Okay. It was so, subliminal. So what I'm, I actually took what you were about to say as the opposite way. And the reason is is, is like Ozzy was seen as this over here, right? And then I don't know who was who would be a pop guy when I was young, even though I'm old, older than them. But in sync, right? You never saw in sync or uh, Barry, Barry Manilow would be a pop guy when you were young. I think. Come right? on, dog, Damn. that's just rude, dude. <laughs> no, no, I'm just that saying. Old, he wasn't a dude. He, dude, was, he, an was, old he was huge in the so. '80s. What are you talking about? I know, but he was still well established by that. Okay. Like usually, the, the the I don't know who was like the pop people back then. Maybe it's hair bands, hair metal. Yeah. But they, but but they they did that stuff that was meant to be like more corporate, right? But it seems now that the 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 more corporate Aerosmith, acts Aerosmith, are yes. doing okay. That pop yeah. comedy, uh, pop the pop uh, yeah. is okay. Aerosmith, right? Yeah. I mean, they started out legit, but then kind of went more poppy. You know? Right, so they they are more. Uh, they were like they weren't blatant with any Satanism. Where like somebody like Billie Eilish is like so in your face with it. For and well, she's totally for young people, right? I mean, that seems to be the biggest difference. Even you, you talk about like sort of like back in the day, how it was more like sort of overt. Uh, in 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 my book, The Dark Path, I had a section on Little Richard. And if you read uh, a book called The Life and Times of Little Richard, uh, he actually talked about this power of darkness 
And uh, I've got the quote here. It says, the power that you've heard so much about, the power that a lot of people don't believe exists, the power of the devil, Satan. We must realize that there's a force that is fighting against us in this world. So even back then, and, and you know, Robert Johnson was from, I don't know, 1920s, 30s, 40s, something like that. Uh, the, there's There's been this sort of knowledge of this going on in the industry for a long time. And I think it used to just be dismissed. And I would argue that, because everyone's looking into conspiracy, everyone's questioning the uh, sort of authorities of our world today. Everyone's looking at these absolutely. big tech companies censoring everything. Yeah, and like, people are aware, like I would argue like maybe over half the population is still pretty ignorant and doesn't care. But like that, that number of truth or people is growing for sure that are, are, are tuned into some of these ideas. Well, I think, you know, from what you were saying about, you know, the 80s rock and, and the satanic Bible and Levian Satanism and all that type of stuff blowing up, the big problem with that is, is that it's actually real and it's powerful. And the kids who misinterpreted it and just, you know, kind of fucked with it and thought it was a joke, a lot of them fucked up their lives. Like I know a lot of people who discovered the satanic Bible at a very young age and they evoked demons and all this type of stuff. And they're still messed up from this day. And it's because of the magic that they discovered in the satanic Bible. And I think the problem with Levian Satanism is um, self worship and ego worship and, and um, believing that only your will is the only one that matters and that you can curse people and hurt people and do anything, which is very similar to like Hollywood's corporate values, you know? So there is a Satanism going on in the background. And also the reason that we're talking about it more is, is that because of the internet age and the age of Aquarius, right? It's harder to be secretive and occult, like how they could keep things secret behind the scenes. And, you know, if like a UTA agent wanted to go to like a ritual or something in like the Hollywood Hills or something like that, they could keep that all super secret back then. But now it's all out in the open being tracked in emails, WikiLeaks, all this type of stuff. So, it's out there, but it's not new. It's been lurking in the background for a very long time, which is why I thought this was a great time to write my book. I, I agree with what you're saying. Uh, you know, so I was growing up, I had a couple people in my life uh, that I was friends with, good friends. And then one day Slayer showed up. Just Slayer was yep. everywhere. And it, I never really got into Slayer until he's much later. And, I, I, and just to be honest with you, I like some of their stuff. I, I'm more of a Metallica guy. I mean, I, I like Metallica, and, and, and I guess they have their imagery as well. Uh, but, man, these kids, these buddies of mine, they started listening to Slayer, man. And next yeah. thing you know, they were like, St I mean, it's very interesting you bring that up, man. It's very interesting you bring that up because I think about these guys in my life, and, like, they they just went to shit. And I hate saying that. Because now they're like, they're cleaning their lives up. They're doing all that stuff. And this is coming from a drug addict, sex addict. Okay. So, you know, I don't really have any room to judge anybody. Uh, you know, I live in a glass house. I shouldn't be throwing things. But they definitely went on a weird run that was a different projector pr uh, projection of where they were going to be going uh, before that. And they definitely they fell off. I don't know, but they, they were. Did black candle magic? You know what, man? It's it's very weird, man. I never saw any of that shit. I saw some Ouija boards, but it was done for fun. But I never saw any of that. They really got into metal. They really got into, like, World War II. And maybe if you start <laughs> studying, like, Nazis, you get, like, oh, yeah. God. Suddenly, like, they were just consumed with World War II. And <laughs> maybe you get into the Nazis. I mean, I'm pretty, sure that happened in the hip -hop. I'm pretty sure that happened to hip-hop. People were listening to gangster rap. People getting into World War II and hip hop. No, no, I'm saying you start listening to gangster rap, then what are you doing? Selling drugs. Like it's, now, these yeah, kids are, yeah. are are listening to Lean. What are they doing? Drinking Lean. Yeah, I mean, it's dude, just, it's, it's monkey see, monkey yeah. do for sure, man. All right, guys, I want to tell you about our new friends at We the People Holsters. That's right. Personal holsters for your guns. American-made holsters designed to conceal carry. Holla at your boy. How excited are you about this, Johnny? 
I could not be more excited, dude. As soon as you told me about the sponsor, I was on their website checking out all the holsters. Do you own a gun, Xavier? Dude, I'm American. Yeah, you are. Barely, but you are. <laughs> you really are. Guys, you know we're living in uncertain times. Millions have come to realize the importance of the Second Amendment right there, okay? If you're looking for the perfect accessory to go with the perfect firearm, get an American-made holster from my friends, and they are my friends, We the People Holsters, okay? Starting at just $40, We the People Holsters have custom molded to your exact firearm for quick, smooth draw. Holla at your boy. They're, they have thousands of options to choose from, plus a, a section of custom printed holsters, okay, including a line with the real tree camouflage. Yeah, for those hunters, Johnny, just like your dad, right? No, no, my brother in law's a big hunter. Your dad doesn't hunt? No. Mm -mm. He doesn't, so he just goes in the forest naked. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> well, you're there. Check out the complete line of patriotic shirts and new EDC tactical gun belts, which come with their exclusive talon buckles, which is which is manufactured 100% in the United States, most likely right next to the Blue Chew fucking boner oh, factory. Oh, shit. Okay? That's America. Here we go. Every holster and gun comes with a lifetime guarantee. If you're not, if it if it's not perfect fit, send it back for a full refund. And oh yeah, don't forget to get some bags from the mouth watering beef jerky. Okay, they got no bacon jerky. They got some serious bacon jerky. Yes, you heard it here. Bacon. Oh, I love bacon jerky. Dude. Do you, Johnny? It's so good, man. Okay, yeah. maybe we'll get them to send you some so you and your lady can make love while you play with your new holster and eat bacon jerk jerky. It's like That's it's, a night. It's like, okay. you're in, it's like you're in our house. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so show your support for the show and this great American company. Go to wethepeopleholsters.com slash tinfoil hat right now. Get an additional $10 off with the promo code tinfoil10. That's T-I-N-F-O-I-L, the number 10. Okay. We the people holsters.com slash tinfoil hat. We the people holsters.com slash tinfoil hat. This is what I mean. This is what I dislike is because, you know, I even want to I almost wanted to pick a bone with Manson about this is because, you know, obviously when he was pro pro like uh, promoting LaVey in the late 90s and LaVey and Satanism and the Satanic Bible became like such a big bestseller at the time Antichrist Superstar came out and he himself had evoked it become some type of demon, you know, at that time in his career. And, you know, there were these kids who were into black magic because of the aesthetic it seemed glamorous right but they're teenagers they're young they're impulsive they don't know what they're doing so they're they're really evoking these low vibrational demons and they're attaching them to them and they're getting drug addictions and fetish addictions and all this type of stuff and they're just kids and i'm like maybe manson didn't know what he was doing but i'm like there's some type of weird bidding right like it, it's too fucked up even the fact that antichrist superstar blew up after levey died was weird to me as well. They blamed him for Columbine too. Yeah, that was stupid though. That's yeah. that's dumb. Like I, I, yeah. I, this is from someone who's who knows him. Like you know, and the paranormal shit that would happen in my life when I would communicate with him. No other person. Like he, the the man is is deeply haunted in black magic, and he's open about it. I feel like he is. I well, don't know about Trent though. Trent seems more maybe chill. But that's Trent Reznor. Trent Reznor. Yeah, I mean that guy's. I mean, gone through some. Can you do stuff. you have an do you have a, a impressive example of uh, paranormal shit happening in your life after communicating with him? You said something. Oh yeah, that. of course. Like um, one time, like I was like you know sleeping, and then I had like sleep paralysis, and then I woke up and it was three in the morning. I'm not making this up. And I looked down at my phone, and he's he texts me and he's like, "Wake up." Like, and I'm not saying that he was doing magic on me or something like that, but we were collaborating and working at the time and we were friends and he, he's, he's very powerful, but I think that what we've seen happen to him in the public right now is a byproduct of all the black magic he's done. I know it. I know it for a fact. And, and I swear by that because he, I know that he openly talks about how he worked with demons to get famous. And the thing about working with angels versus demons is that demons are all about instant gratification. They'll give you something faster, but the price is so much more fucked up and they will fuck with you all the time. Angels won't do that. So I want to get your guys' and Isaac, if you have any, uh, any take on what he's saying, please jump in. Don't 
Uh, Yo, I definitely, I definitely got some takes on it. I don't want to hijack the. No, the, uh, dude, hijack away. Okay. Go hard, man. Okay, so like my, I'm, I'm hesitant to take this sort to put this sort of Christian warrior hat on because like I'm a degenerate. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I am an Orthodox Christian, but I'm, I'm very shitty at it. Uh, I have a lot of problems with faith. I have a lot of problems with organized religion. Uh, but that being said, like, that's still my team. Right. And when I look at, like, if I read this book, it's one of the best books I've ever read It's by father Seraphim Rose called Orthodoxy and the religion of the future. I don't know if Alex has, if you've ever heard of this or not. No, I've never read it. Okay. This is from like, this was like a monk. He was a gay dude and he became a monk. And he wrote this, he wrote a series of books. Uh, the other one was called on nihilism. That was again on point. This is like the sixties or seventies, maybe. And this book, orthodoxy and the religion of the future, this dude knew the whole script 60 years ago, the whole script of exactly how our world is shaping right now. Okay. And his whole sort of shtick, which I subscribe to, uh, I'm not, <laughs> it's not quite yet the hill I'm ready to die on, but I'm getting closer and closer. The more <laughs> weird shit happens in our society. The, the, the angle he's trying to get across in the book is that the, the powers that be in entertainment specifically yeah. are being influenced by evil forces to bring about the end of Christianity so that they can bring in this vague spirituality that has this idea of like this cosmic consciousness kind of woo woo globalist sort of thing. Interesting. Which is very, very self-centered and, and get this. And he even talks about how the scientists will be put in the future, you know, back in the sixties, he's talking about in the future, which is like now uh, the scientists in the future will be pushing for contact with aliens. And his whole thing was, we don't know. He calls it, he talks about pre last. It's a term where, common men and women have no, we don't have the power of discernment to know what we're in communications with, which is where, you know, to, to sort of lob a critique Alex's way, which I'm not trying to be combative. Cause again, like I read the book and you combative, it's all good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, There's a lot of good. There was a, <laughs> there was a lot of good, good thoughts in the book about positive thinking. And I really do believe in, uh, I talked to Sam about this and XG and Johnny when I was out there, uh, that law of attraction idea of positive thinking, like that's a hundred percent. You make your own heaven or hell. I believe that. Mm -hmm. But um, the pro where, where Alex and I sort of diverge is I don't mess with the magic stuff. I don't mess with the ghost hunting stuff anymore. I don't mess with none of that because I, I believe firmly that kind of like Sam's talking about his, his friends listening to Slayer, you know, just cause you listen to Slayer doesn't mean you're going to be possessed by the demons, but like it definitely starts opening doors up. I agree with that. That facilitate this thing. And, and magic is openly asking. For I mean, it. how and many it, rappers sing about getting shot and shooting and get shot? It happens all. I, I don't know what it is, dude. I don't know what it is. I don't know what, this world we live in and like every time i think i understand it i i i just some new layer or wrinkle comes that just throws the whole thing off but it seems to be the energy you put out is the energy you get back like the more and more i study that i i say this all the time the three things i i i i practice in my life that help my life is law of attraction a mile of abundance love thy neighbor you know and when i practice those my life changes for the better Oh uh, yeah. So I I got another one, but just real quick, the shoot me thing. Uh, you know the song "Come Together." You know the "Come shoot. Together." Yeah, you, you know the beginning part that we goes. Shoot. Yeah, that's John Lennon saying "Shoot me, shoot me." Really? Shoot me. Yeah. I mean, that's what that's what the rumor is. Yeah. And if you listen to the the multi tracks, it, that's dude. what he's saying. Yeah. Hey, but how crazy is it that these fools rap about that? And then you know that the baby said a gay comment on uh, Lollapalooza, and they're canceling him. Because he said a gay comment, but God forbid he kills about he talks about killing people every single day, and they're mad that he said a, he said something about HIV, and they're blowing blowing it's their just, mind. Just uh, everything to drive people crazy. But to go back no. to this, it's like, yeah, man, it's kind of interesting, dude. The energy you put out, the energy you get back, and you look at this stuff, and how many people like everyone's like he pre predicted his death, or it's like did he bring it on by constantly talking about it? You see that well, all the time. Well, yeah, I mean, wasn't, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure XS, I don't know how to fucking say his name, XX, whatever. He was into, he was into magic. He, he was, op he would openly talk about magic and, and black magic. But yeah, from what Isaac was saying, I just want to get back to that for a minute. Um, yeah. So your concept is more about the idea that 
you know, we uh, with our self will are not powerful enough to discern what's happening in the spirit world. So therefore, anytime we think we're communicating with an entity, we're most likely being deceived. Right. And I empathize with that point of view, but I also disagree with it because it comes from an Abrahamic, not uh, dogmatic kind of Christian fear based way of thinking. And though there are beautiful things about the Bible and beautiful things about Christianity, I mean, the whole 12 steps are, you know, rooted in things that are, come from Christianity and have helped so many non Christian people, you know, there are beautiful values, love thy neighbor thy, by, by themselves, all that, whatever. But um, the reason I have problem with it is because it's too reductive and it, it, it gives Christianity and God and all of that dogma too much power when we as humans might actually be more spiritual, more cosmic, more new agey than we think. And I think if anything, um, people who are deceived by Christianity and the dogmatic aspects of it, and they're too following it too much could be, a missing out on aspects of, of magic or spirituality that can change their life that isn't Christian. And I think, you know, it gets difficult, right? Because Christianity has a lot of uh, interesting things about lust, you know, and all the, you know, the nofap community would agree with that. And uh, I think, um, yeah, I just, I don't really agree with that, but I get it though. I get it. Like, how am I so sure I'm working with this archangel? How am I so sure I'm working with this, spirit when it could be someone deceiving me i mean maybe vibration can discern it you know the how you feel i don't know well i think um and, and you know this, this is your book not mine but, but if i recall you, you made mention of a, a couple of instances where like they made you know after contacting whatever like one of them made you fall down while them drug you around yeah. the room so like you, you've had some bad you know, brushes apparently. Right. So, I mean, is well, that yeah, well, like I had sleep, like when I first started doing magic, I would get sleep paralysis all the time because I was opening myself up to the spirit world. The problem is, is not a problem, but going down this path, people are not willing to realize if you're opening up the light, you're also opening up the dark and yeah. it's a, it's a polarity and it's a, there are two treasure chests that will be open because if you're open to the upper unseen etheric worlds, well, guess what? You're, you're, gonna be attacked by entities sometimes when you're in a low vibrational frequency or low vibrational state and that does happen and a lot of people have a lot of fear about this stuff i mean one of the reasons people don't practice magic is because they're afraid and also this is why it's been kept secret for so long is because it's not a path for everyone right mm -hmm. and people are like well you wrote a mainstream book well about magic and i'm like no because it, it'll never be mainstream because how many people are going to actually read this book and actually practice the occult i don't know yeah but and i think i think that a book like yours is and don't take this disrespectfully or nothing i think it's <laughs> co-opted by sort of more mainstream media sources like I, I know you've you've splashed the the uh you know news uh, a few news sites I, i'm sure you yeah. know which ones. i i couldn't name off my head, but like you know b pretty big news sites yeah uh talking about your book and obviously madonna right and yeah. like rose mcgowan like like there's a lot of powerful you know weapons sort of like supporting this and you know i've been i've been writing tons of books and I've never had the mainstream media be like, Hey, let's do a thing about your book. You know, it's, it's because I think the, the ideas of magic are instrumental to this new world order, global government thing where they want to, um, and, and let's talk about Madonna. Let's talk about Madonna. That's, that's a better way to give an example. Cause, cause the, if we call them the Illuminati, this, this new world order stuff, they have this sort of, fantasy of this perfected society, perfected man abandoning the uh, traditional structures of religion. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, with religion comes a lot of problems, uh, <laughs> clearly. Yeah. Um, but Madonna, she did a, a song with Quavo from the Migos yeah. called Future, which ironically was written by Diplo, who, if, if I read in your book, you yeah, I'm friends <laughs> you with worked him, with yeah. him on doing the, having him dress in drag for, uh, Madison yeah, yeah. Cutter, we were right? just fucking with everyone. Yeah. 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 Because, because, because the attitudes, hold, of hold, hold, book... stop, stop. <laughs> so when that guy on Saturday night live to dress in a woman as a, as a girl, 
You were part of that, Alex? No, 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 like an Aphex twin, Chris Cunningham type moment. That's what we were kind of going for. All right, I want to tell you about our friends at American Home Shield. That's right. For 50 years, American Home Shield has protected household budgets from the unexpected, like a dryer that won't dry or an AC that's lost its cool. In fact, they help cover the cost of repair and replace parts of over 20 home system appliances when they wear out. No matter how old they are, service fees, limitations, and exclusions apply. See plans for details, guys. It's real simple. Here's what's going on, all right? Right now, to celebrate 50 years of providing homeowners peace of mind, you can take $50 off their most comprehensive plan ever. Go to a hs.com slash tin foil stop it right now to celebrate 50 years of providing home owners peace of mind you could take 50 dollars off their most comprehensive plans ever go to a hs.com slash tin foil okay tin foil now and save 50 dollars off that's a hs.com slash Tin foil for fifty dollars off any plan. Service fees, limitations, and exclusions apply. See plan for details. But um, right, no, go I on, get Isaac. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut uh, you off. There. Yeah, and 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 we'll and we'll talk. We'll talk about Diplo in one second. Uh, um, but like Madonna and Quavo, they did the song Future, and uh, the lyrics. If you listen to the lyrics, they're saying, "Not everyone's coming to the future. Not not everyone that's here is gonna last." Uh, they say it's the future crucifixion on a cross, but you know, I'm rising above it all. Uh, and, and the song in my interpretation, and if you look at, there's a video from the Eurovisions awards where Quavo and Madonna at the top of this pyramid and the masses, I mean, clearly it's like the sheeple are all sort of mindlessly walking up this pyramid and falling off the backside of it, because that shows you exactly what this globalist plan is, is they want, they want to like, have these elitists at the top and everyone else kind of like in uh, Fritz Lang's metropolis. It's like everyone else is just feeding the big Moloch machine, uh, slaving away. Like that's what they want. They, they, and they sell it as, Oh, it's this perfected society. And you know, these, these globalists have all these, these hard ons for, Oh yeah, we're going to make sure everyone has the right amount of food and natural resources by putting it on a blockchain and telling you what you can drink and eat and when you can do this and that and the other, uh, and and it, they they're gonna sell it as oh it's it's for the protection of everybody and it's like no this is for you you rich fucks who already have tried to squeeze everything out of everyone else and this is the last push of what you need so you can live this perfected immortality life and the rest of us well I I kind of just I, I disagree with that because I think what Madonna is talking about on that song is mostly about Kabbalah it's like the idea that when you awaken yourself to this the tree of life and the Sephirah and you are um taking care of your consciousness and you're living a hyper conscious life, you know, we're, we're going into a more age of Aquarian enlightened age and not everyone can come with us if they don't want to practice, you know, spirituality that is, you know, basically like magical and spiritual. Yeah. Like people are not awake. People don't want to open them yeah. up. So I think she's talking about Kabbalah and I know that sounds yeah. elitist, but I don't find it elitist because it's a choice. I mean, I think the reason she posted my book is she was like, look, like I used magic to get to where I am. I used the power of my mind. I used, I mean, Kabbalah, you know, was later on in her life, but if any way she was always doing a sense of magic, I mean, she said, I want to rule the world on TV. And then she did it, you know, like there's a, there's a will and, and, and that is very similar to, you know, personal development, like Tony Robbins type, you know, stuff right that is if, if you want to be here you can if you want to get to z from a you can do it right yeah. so the problem is though is, is that people are skeptical so then it makes occultists and magicians and witches and all these type of people look like you know 
that we're just trying to like hoard it all for ourselves and that like we're not but but anyone can do it because they have access to it you know but then see this is where it becomes a difficult conversation because coincidentally i get what you're saying like everyone who is praising magic is usually like rich privileged you know and and apparently what i've done some studies on is apparently like astrology and magic and occultism and all this type of stuff used to only be for like the plutocratic like rich people like it started that way like yeah, it started I, out as an Isaac thing. Newton was w- would talk about how the ideas of alchemy were not meant for the masses because they were too stupid to get it and and like and look again like I'm not combat I'm not being combative I don't I don't disagree with some of these elitists sometimes because I look around at society I think yeah we live with a bunch of morons and yeah like, dude yeah you know I mean? there's some so, people like- <laughs> got no chance <laughs> no chance right so and, uh, so my question is this it's like. You know, and I'm loving this conversation. It's just like, so it's like, I mean, religion, organized religion versus magic, right? But what is right? What is wrong? Both of them have bad, bad, bad records, right? I mean, like, I mean, like Christianity, my, my best friend from high school, I'm about to go home and celebrate, uh, um, uh, a big reunion from my my graduating class. All the boys are going back. And one of my good friends has lived in uh, our hometown the whole time. And when he went to college, he be, he came back extremely religious. And what he always talked about was how he practiced the same Christianity that Jesus practiced. And that was a big thing for him. And the one thing I will tell you is that he's always been happy. He's always been a nice guy. At first, he would always want to try to, you know, like, help me convert. But he really chilled out on that. But he never was, like, a super judgmental dude. He never pushed his views on anybody. So I wonder if that is a different thing than what we're seeing is organized organized religion, in particular the Roman Catholic Church and what the Roman Catholic Church is doing. And, and like, hey, guess what? I'm going to say it. There's some stuff involved in a Judaism that seems to be not on the up and up as as well. There's no like body like the Roman Catholic Church that you can point to, but there are some issues in Judaism. And guess what? Islam as well. All these organized religions have some dark, okay. dark sides to them. And, but, you know, there's also people who practice these things. They're very pure of heart, too, as well. So and then magic, we can get into magic as well. And like, yeah, there's people out there who I, I meet witches all the time that are like just loving nature. And then you got Marilyn Manson out there doing like making Canadian boys paralyze, you know, with sleep paralysis. <laughs> so like, what are we doing with that? So it's like, it's a, just a very interesting conversation. And maybe, just maybe, it, you know, I say this all the time. It's like, the idea isn't evil. The the person wielding the idea Boom, will decide whether down. it is evil or not. Do you understand? Like, like you know i mean that's exactly it that's exactly it and i feel like sam as an artist you know that like you know you would never shame people in their creative expressions if they're not harming anyone in the same way that a lot of people who interpret christianity try to induce shame and guilt into people over their expressions which doesn't help anyone you know what i mean like you know the the christian boy who's like like angry at the boy next door who's like asking him to show him his playboy and he's like that's the devil you know what i mean but secretly he wants to look at the playboy so it's like wouldn't you rather just be free to look at the playboy you know what i mean rather than like or at least experience life with you know um, not excess, because I, I think everyone should experience excess to know how meaningless it is. But I think like, you know, allowing yourself the freedom rather than living in the constraints and restrictions that some people put on themselves. But Sam's right, you know, like the big problem is, is how people misinterpret all of this stuff. None of it is inherently bad. Christianity isn't even inherently bad. Catholic, Catholic stuff isn't even inherently bad. You know what I mean? It's yeah, that's one of my that's one of my hangups with Christianity is like the uh, the shaming of like sexuality stuff. Like obviously, like they're very much against. Uh, like I think the Orthodox Church came out uh, maybe two years ago and said that uh, if you're homosexual and you're married, you can't take communion because you're actively choosing a life of sin. But 
to me, I don't understand that because it's like, well, we all live in sin continuously. I mean, we, we, on the way to church, we're sinning. I mean, it's just, it's just the way we're built. And I don't understand why we get so hung up on the sexual elements of, of this experience. Exactly. Like, so yeah, there's a lot of shame involved with organized Christianity and it's turning a lot of people off. Like but is I, it, Isaac, my question, I, I don't mean to cut you off because I oh, just God. have this thought is like, is that Christianity or is this like the mutating of this religion like by powerful, by powerful entities that have wanted to con control people? So it's like when we look at sexuality, sex is such a uh, like it, it's such a powerful force. And it is the one thing that we all do that we're very specific on what we like. And and we could hear if everyone put all the weird shit they've ever done on the table here and was really <laughs> honest, like some of us would I'd be like, dude, you're a weirdo, right? <laughs> but we can all agree we like no, sushi. We could all agree we like uh, you know, whatever food we like, or all we all like working out, like all these, but sex is the one thing that is so it could cause you to just to destroy your entire life. People find out you're into one thing that isn't accepted by a lot of things. And let's let's take pedophilia off the table. I don't care. <laughs> the, you know, I want. I just want Ew. to take it off because that's not what I'm talking about. Some people, whoa, whoa, about pedophiles. Well, now you're hurting somebody else. Okay, so take that out the thing. But Harm everything to else, none. harm to none. You know, if you're not again, if you're not hurting anybody. All the weird shit. It's such an amazing way to control everybody. And so oh, it's yeah. like if this religion is, you know, if, if through religion, they've been able to really put the screws of people on whatever weirdness they like. Like before, if you cheated on your wife, that was like the same kind of sin as being gay or even deeper now, mm -hmm. what seems like today, pedophiles. And I don't yeah. see that in any way the same thing again because you know willing participants. Yeah, yeah. What what, what made this pope cool? This the newest pope. What made them all cool and everyone loved them because what uh, he was pro gay marriage. Well, the media did that. Yeah, but but that's that's how important sex is. Right, that right, he, right. He made it, and now all of a sudden people liked them. The Catholic Church was back in the game. People were like, "Yo, we got a cool pope." Yeah. So here's what I, I'm. I, here's my whole thing with religion and everything. It's just like I am totally fine with people practicing whatever makes them be better people, and then you deal with the consequences in the afterlife. Okay, that's up to you. I like you know. I mean, that's just my opinion because there's so much history has been rewritten and rewritten and rewritten. Oh, fuck we yeah. don't know if we're coming or going. I we just don't know. And yeah. as much as we could under, and I, Isaac, I know because cause this seems to maybe be leaning more towards, uh, you know, the other side of the argument. But like for me, it's like, what are your thoughts on that I, as an Orthodox Christian? Uh, like I said, I'm I'm probably not a good person to represent <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the Christian community. But um, what, what I do so. Here's where things get weird for me is a lot of the sort of Christian truthers, they get really inflamed. Like, we're, let's talk about the Diplo cross-dressing thing, right? Um, they get really inflamed by stuff like that. Which and, is why it's fun to fuck with them. <laughs> right? I agree. Because, like, I don't care. Like, who cares? Like, why is this so bad for him to cross-dress? But the thing that they – the reason I believe they get upset, and, again, I don't necessarily agree with it. It doesn't bother me. But – they they see there's a thing called antinomianism where it's all about destroying the social construct the the social norms the morals of what is considered good and what is evil and that's actually what like the bavarian illuminati they were really into this they were really into shaking up things in in the 1700s because back then you had the the royal family monarchs yep. and the church in in cahoots telling everyone how to live and like i agree with the illuminati on that stuff like they were like let's overthrow this bitch and that's what they did in the french revolution um hey where, alex hold on but, let, let me finish my bad, yeah. let let me finish. go on uh, I, I, and, and um the problem with antinomianism with, you know having diplo dress up and drag according to like the people that subscribe to this stuff which was would probably be like your uh, father Seraphim Rose kind of guys. They, 
this path is inverting reality. And this is all Gnostic principles. It's like uh, the darkness becomes the light. The idea that Lucifer is really God. God is really the dick. And he, you know, put it on, put us in this prison planet and we're living in this simulation world and on all this stuff. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's kind of a deep subject, but that's, that's what I would argue the Christian sort of beef is with, you know, guys cross-dressing and guys not living up to, but I think it's all bullshit because I'm like, dude, the whole, the whole idea of the gender of what is a man, and what is a woman is bullshit to me. I don't believe in any of that. It's like, well, none of this matters. yeah. I mean, do you know what is, is so important about offending people in, in, in art and in comedy and in, in anything is, is that it challenges them. It makes them feel something that they didn't want to feel. And when you offend people, you wake them up to a new point of view and it's their choice if they want to move on or stay where they are. That's why it's, uh, you know, offensive art is a part of evolution. You know, when Madonna made her sex book in the nineties, everyone was so offended because, you know, how, how dare we see pornography go mainstream, but we look back now and we see that was a liberation of sexuality for mostly everyone. And it pre it, predicted our like Instagram baddie society today, you know, of, of women expressing themselves in a sexual way. So I think, you know, a big problem that I have with anyone who is religious or has a spirituality is, is when they try to say, this is the only one, this is my path, this should be your path. And you're going, something negative is going to happen to you if you don't follow this path. That is really dark. And I feel like a lot of the occultists I've met have never done that because yeah. what they're trying to say is also like a lot of real like occultists and witches and stuff, magicians like who are fucking billionaires and stuff. They're super low key. They're not flashing. They're like Crowley inspired fucking, you know, t-shirts. I'll fight Crowley. I don't like Crowley either. I think he's I'll an idiot. I always him. thought he was an idiot and I've always hated him. And I hated how, um, Jason Louvre and all these type of people tried to like enforce him onto ev everyone who's starting magic for the first time. And they're like, Crowley's this, our God, the beast. I'm like, fuck off. He was a uh, fucking lunatic, drama. drug addict pedophile. You know, you bring up some very interesting Alex and we'll get to yeah, your yeah, question yeah. real quick. And you know, it, it just to me it's like when we and this is not this is not Isaac's point of view but he's pointing out on the religious side what people do and, and my point to that is I totally agree with him on that and, and, and so so when you go hey man we hey dude let's have gun laws and take guns away from people I'm like well does that mean gun homicides gonna go away and the answer no. is it's not and you know it so, so the you know, when I hear right now, when I hear, oh man, morally, this country is decaying, I go, everything that everybody's doing right now has been done forever. Yeah. It's just the difference is your life isn't destroyed by doing it. Okay. Like, you know, it's like sex work right now, right? It, it, it's just like there was a time, right? When, when uh, let's say a guy, like someone brought it up on the show, I forget who it was. He would talk about how these men would become uh, priests and leave their family. And at the time, women couldn't work. So these mothers of these children who have been abandoned by these guys who decided to become holy men had no opportunity to do anything other than sell uh, themselves for prostitution and then they end up becoming the low lights of the world. And to me, it's like, why does that have to happen? And I, again, this isn't Isaac saying that Isaac was pointing out what these people are saying. Why does that have to happen? Are men, if we outlawed men wearing dresses, do you think men would stop wearing dresses? No, they would never happen. That's my only issue is like my whole thing is, and this is where I get in trouble with some sides, man. It's like, listen, man, if you have a rule that you think God is enforced, you should follow that rule, but you can, you're never going to be able to convince everybody to do it. Okay. If you don't Absolutely. like, if you don't want, if you don't think the vaccine should, or, or let's flip it the other way. If you think you should have to take the vaccine, you should take the vaccine. You shouldn't tell people how to do it. If you don't like gay marriage, guess what? Don't get gay married. How about that one? <laughs> if you don't, if and this is where I get in a lot of trouble because I posted this libertarian thing and people went nuts. Is like, if you think abortion should be illegal, 
don't get an abortion. That's my opinion. Because that's you're not will. stopping that's it. Will. You're yeah. not stopping it. And what you're doing you're is putting people in dangerous it. situations. And that's where it is. So people are like, well, you think the go you think people should I'm like, I don't even get to that question. I get to the government shouldn't tell people how to live their lives. I don't even go to what the question is at that point. It is stopped that the government shouldn't tell people how to live their life. And that's how it is. And I, if I'm going to upset some of you guys, I totally understand. But listen, you know, I will, I will ride in the town on a horse and fight for your right to be a Christian. But I will also defend the other side on their right not to be a Christian. Because I think people Fuck should yeah. have to live their life. Because I have yet to see a crime that something that has made illegal that stops. I just don't see it. And that's my whole thing. And it, it, like, I lose people on this conversation. I'm sorry, that's just genius. know I defend you. You know, if you want to do prayer before school, step outside, do a prayer, and walk in. Just like I think, I don't think religion should be in school. Just like I don't think drag queens should be reading to children. Leave your <laughs> bullshit at home. Leave your shit at home and let children learn one plus one is two. How to spell, how to do all that stuff. That's what that's what school should be. Nobody should be putting their bull their stuff and bullshit. I mean your stuff. I don't mean to disrespect you. You shouldn't be putting your stuff on the people. Hey, school should be about, be about weird learning. question. You said to teach them math, science, and all that. What about history? Would you be down with school, public school teaching their history? Because that's their history. That's the that's the or, question. What is history? Yeah. I what mean, is history? History subjective. It's all hallucination. What, what do you think, it's, all, it's, it's, it's the parents' job to put it, it's the parents' role to put it all all of that education into context, though, right? I mean, I, I totally agree and, on that. And that's that's where we've lost so much in these broken, you know, the broken homes that so many kids come from, because they don't have strong parents at home, you know, to kind of put things into context culturally. And you know personally for kind of how they want to live. I, th I think what Sam said is is, is 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 very true in the concept of you know change yourself, work on yourself, and your reality will change. Like focus on yourself because these people who are like I'm gonna erase gay people kissing, I'm gonna erase gay sex. Like what type of mindset are you fucking going through where you think that you have that ability to control that many people's wills by like, you know, with your God hates fag signs. You know what I mean? Well, like, I don't want to see gay guys making out in public, but guess what? I don't want to see anybody making out in public. I don't care how I Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie yeah. making out at fucking California chicken. I'd be like, get out of here. Nobody wants to see it. I'd get watch out it. I'd watch it. Okay. Oh, you man. would watch it. Hey, if you're going to do it, go all the hey, way. At least. I mean, like, let's, oh, let's so see like, yeah. you'd be mad if they just stopped at yeah, making yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, is yeah, that what it is? Yeah, all that reminds me of is your, is your Chipotle. Totally joke. Okay. That's yeah. all I hear. It's like, <laughs> well, my whole point is just like, I don't really want, I mean, I make jokes to people at shows like after they, they meet and greet. I'm like, Hey guys, good to see you. Love to watch you guys make love one time. <laughs> it's a joke, right? Yeah. It's an obvious joke. But the truth of the matter is yeah, like obviously. anything that I apply to gay people, I just really don't even want to see straight people do it. I just really don't. I don't want to see people making out. You want to hold hands? I don't even care. You see two dudes walking down the street, holding hands. I don't care. It does nothing to me. And if there is a God, let him deal with it. By the way, the God <laughs> hates facts, people. I don't even know how much that is real. It's honestly. not. Yeah. This one dude died and they stopped touring. He was paying for everything because it was causing chaos to everybody. Yeah. I feel like Westboro Bor 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 Baptist Church, you know, like kind of encapsulates like the, 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 the like, the joke of being alive on this planet. You know what I mean? Like, like, like this is why we need to have a sense of humor. But they're also either. use Alex to while demonize religion. That's what they're used for. Like, yeah, yeah, of course. What, what happens in our lives is that the squeaky wheel always gets the, 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 the fucking oil, right? It's like every group we know is defined by their extremists. They're an embodied straw man. They are a straw man that actually exists for you, you know, to, exactly. to, to target. Yeah, I'm with you. So, Alex, uh, one thing I want to bring up is like, you know, I do get kind of worried that you are you you, uh, you associate with some people that are a little shady as fuck. Let's just say <laughs> you hang out with some shady motherfuckers, <laughs> and what what does that involve? What does it involve you doing? Because 
Isaac brings up a great point. Dude's written 95 uh, fucking books, and he, he can't even get the principal from Say by the Bell to fucking read the book on Instagram. <laughs> so, like, you're getting everybody. You're getting the cat lady, Madonna, who looks like fucking Garfield now. You're getting her to fucking do I an think Instagram she's post. Yeah. I think she's so well, you obviously so. like you fucking cats then, okay? <laughs> no, because I, she Madonna's needs. Beauty, someone needs. We Madonna's need, beauty listen. is irre irrevocable and immoral. Well, Alex, you do that. I want to do an interview on her and whoever plastic surgeon is it needs to stop you need to be you dude you're, you're competing with people that came way after you and she can do whatever she wants but she's starting to look like a fucking the tiger queen i gotta be honest with you so the point is this like there is something to that alex when when you're hanging out with a guy who you openly admit is into the dark arts you have to be somewhat concerned you're on the show right now look like you just fucking shoved an eight ball of coke up your asshole and you're just hanging out. I got to be honest with you. It's a no, little no, fucking no, no, weird. No, no, no. The, the reason that all of that stuff happened was because I practice magic and it's, and it's very simple. You know what I mean? Like, and, and anyone can do it. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, it's but Alex, Alex, it's you're, suspicious. you're not getting, I get that it's suspicious. I get that it's it is. suspicious. It is Alex. And listen, dude, I'm, at the end of the day, I'm not mad at you. I'm not, I'm not judging you. You got to do what's not. best for you. I, I, you could be on the show a million fucking times. I, I'm not going to judge you on that. That's not my style. You got to do you, but you know, there is something crazy because you're not getting, let's say, uh, the pillow guy to fucking promote your show. <laughs> or I don't know who's the most innocent of all the ce celebrities out there. Howie Mandel's not like, look at my boy, my Canadian boy, fucking Kazami, and this book he wrote. Like, like, like the people who are somewhat neutral in life. <laughs> You're getting the people who kind of have this kind of shady reputation going well, I, on. I mean, I mean, part of that is the subject matter, though. Uh, yeah, I mean, no, I get that, but. But it's like all of it. Listen, Adam, dude, I feel like you manifested your career for sure. Well, you know, my whole thing is like I flung first grade. I've I learned very early that nobody got me. So I'm just doing my whole thing. And again, Alex, I'm not judging you at all. I'm just saying it's kind of. But I get it. It does look a little sus, right? Yeah, like this totally kid from Vancouver, sus, bro. Like, and how does like why is he connected to all these elite people? Like, it is a little sus, huh? Yeah. Well, I call myself the Illuminati Prince for a reason. Maybe yeah. I won't. But, but he's also I, on I mean, tinfoil hat, so you have to, yeah. you have yeah, to give him some credit. Hat, but that's but... more about like tinfoil hat. All are welcome, dude. I mean, yeah. one of the earlier Bishop. shows we did, we had. Yeah, but I mean, there have been a lot of people here. that are welcome that haven't come on the show too. Well, like, yeah, those are phony fucks, yeah, right? Exactly. I mean, like, exactly. they look yeah, at the title, they're like, I'm not going on a show like that. Well, then don't come on here and have one of the best conversations you're ever going to have. But this I think what what's important do. about what Isaac does and what he's been doing is, is that no matter if people disagree or agree with him, the level of deconstruction and analysis and questioning surfaces and the things around us and, and looking at the deeper meaning behind those things is important for any person in society to have to survive. You know what I mean? So it doesn't matter if you agree or disagree with Isaac's conspiracies. Um, it's the point that there are conspiracies because if we're too blind and we're too trusting, you know, we're, we're, we might as well just fucking put like a Tide logo on our head. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're just corporate whores. We're branded yeah, and, by, we're, we're, we're slaves. We're literally slaves. And, and you said it best, Alex, in your book, you made mentions, I'm going to paraphrase, something to the effect of how uh, sigils control us, talking about like social media and memes. And, you know, ironically, that's what Kanye West said when he, when he went on his rant on the St. Pablo concert tour yep. right after Kim Kardashian got thrown in the bathtub and threatened with, you know, they were stealing her jewelry and Kanye lost his freaking mind. I mean, that whole thing was like, we could talk for hours about that whole incident about how it ties into the bathtub and, and Whitney Houston and Bobby Christina. And now uh, even Britney Spears, we talked about Britney Spears on Tinfoil many times, Britney Spears on Instagram just the other day had this horrific story about how she was locked in the bathroom. And to me, I read that and think, dude, is this like a, a cover story for something deeper that's going on with Britney Spears? And I don't know, obviously I don't know. Uh, I just, I just find it odd. There's all this like bathtub symbolism. Um, but anyways, yeah, the, the idea is that the, going back to what Alex was saying, I think Alex, Alex and I are both looking at the same thing. We're looking at the same phenomenon and, and we both 
agree that like I, I believe I don't want to say agree. I, I believe that this is a real thing. I think ritual magic and, and sigil magic and candle magic. I think all this stuff really works. This My isn't whole, fake. This I don't is think it's fake. Uh, I think that, and by the way, I grew up in love with Madonna. So like it breaks my heart to talk shit about her. You know what I mean? Uh, but anyways, the, the, the phenomenon is real. I just approach it from like this cautious perspective of, I'm concerned that the powers that be want this new spirituality to take over. And I believe it's because there's this Luciferian antichrist agenda coming down the pike. Uh, whereas like, it seems like a guy like Alex looks at this phenomenon and says, Hey, this can be a beautiful thing and you could take this and make your life better. I don't disagree with Alex. I just, I, I my conspiracy slash it might be too powerful for most people to handle like I get, that I get gets it into it. it bro that gets into it are they pushing an agenda that is too much for people to be able, the average person to you so when you want to, to uh be able to maneuver with so when you watch like like the kardashians like 20 years in the game there's so much ritual fucking magic with them oh, there's chaos. a whole episode where kim freaks out because someone's hide uh, she can't find her her candles that she's been manifesting with and so, chris jenner used to advertise candle magic it's on the internet so so my whole point is that they push a certain agenda and and philosophy that i don't think the average person can mentally digest and financially support like they date dangerous men that aren't very reliable in life or or they represent a demographic let's say rappers right who maybe aren't the most reliable mates in the world and that these people like the younger people see that and emulate it it's like 16 and pregnant like how many girls watched that and thought it'd be okay cool to get pregnant and they didn't realize that what they were bringing on and it's a monkey see monkey do type situation no, no, no. I, and I agree with you. And I think a big problem, like something that I disagree with, like is the, the, you know, like the idea that mainstream culture doesn't influence people or that like MTV culture didn't influence people and their behavior and, and the, what, what they're thinking about and what they're focusing on. And, you know, like, you know, why did guys my age go see Transformers 2 because of Megan Fox sitting on that bike? Literally everyone paid money to watch that scene in 2009. You know what I mean? So it's like, they're playing on our baseline instincts and who's doing that the dudes in the suits the corporations all these type of people so there is a level of power when you restrict that impulse and you're like no they're like i'm watching this advertisement and they're just trying to like fuck with me and that's really powerful and i guess that's also what isaac represents also he's, he's trying to say like look like they're trying to steer you in all these different type of directions. So why don't you choose which direction you go towards? Whereas rather than that automatic baseline impulse of like, just hit the fucking slot machine. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. And I do think it's a very interesting conversation. Hey, Alex, you talked about you and Diplo doing the cross-dressing to offend people. I was wondering, do you guys think Little Nox, Little Nas X is actually just offending people and not actually part no, of the occult? No. See, this is this is a big problem that I, I had a conversation with because I'm a dumb straight white male and people were upset with me when I had an opinion about this until they kind of put me in my place. So <laughs> with, Little Nas X, Little, with Little Nas X, he's actually expressing his sexuality. Like, it's not like the Britney Madonna kiss. I don't know, he's, he's, twerk, he's twerking on the devil. That's trying to piss people Listen, off in a way. If you don't see, think he's okay, doing yeah, this for click that's, and view. That's right. He's taking one out of the Manson playbook and he's he's a provocateur with the, that mm -hmm. stuff. But the, I mean, look, this is what I find very interesting. Jack Harlow said in a tweet that he would have gone um, naked in the Little Nas X video if he asked him. But if you watch that video, Jack Harlow is with like a naked girl in a thong and it's like a very straight verse in a gay song. Do you really believe Jack Harlow's tweet that he would have had done that scene? No, he just said that because he was bullied by the mob into having to be correct. And I don't like that. Like be legit, be real. You know what I mean? No, it's just an interesting thing of that whole thing. It's like, I don't really care if Nas is doing that. That's Lil Nas X's whole thing. The problem is everybody defending him 
as, oh, dude, uh, these rock groups did this. They didn't get any shit. They got tons of shit. They had oh, their yeah. albums taken and ran over by fucking bulldozers. They had, like, death. I mean, like, it was way worse than what Lil Nas got. Everyone what? else, Lil Nas X, like, Lil Nas okay, got a little got bit a too much. Hashtag. What about Lil the shoes? Got a hashtag. What about the shoes? Human drop, human blood on those shoes. Yeah, I mean, That's it's so cool. obvious yeah. that he's doing it for a reaction. Yeah, but, but it's so... It's so, it's not, I mean, it's calculated and it's fake and it's constructed, but I think, you know, it has less to do with him being gay and more so that he loves attention and he's an attention whore. 100%. You know I mean? 100%. Isaac, any thoughts on that? Uh, Converse also just released a shoe with the pentagrams. It's unbelievable. It's what? crazy. Yeah, Converse just released a show and, and uh, a, a shoe with the pentagrams and the guy... The guy who I'm looking through my notes. But see, this is this is also like this is also cool hunters. You know, this is all like millennial cool hunters who are like watching Gen Z on TikTok and are like, oh, magic little little girls who are like, you know, doing candle magic and like, oh, this is gonna sell. Like, it's just like a rehash of like the hot topic era for a generation that never got to experience it. So, so the guy who who created that shoe, Rick Owens. I'm, I'm researching because I'm about I to know do Rick a Owens. show. On, oh, dude. Okay. So yeah. he, oh, another shady connection, yeah. Alex. Another shady ass oh, connection. Oh, man. Another. Oh. Yeah, no. <laughs> so he was in a <laughs> song called Mona Lisa and the lyrics. He he was in the song singing. And he says, black magic, fuck boy, teen, hired, got her clean. Uh, blah, 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 necromantic, savage, useless power, uh, supernatural distortion. He has these weird lyrics, right? And then he comes up with this. this Is this the Tommy Cash song? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, a lot of these people are in fashion. They like surface level things, aesthetics. They just probably, I mean, yeah. most, I mean, honestly, it's probably not that deep, but a lot of people use this type of stuff because it's like a fashion statement it's like an aesthetic and i talk about in the book how i dislike that i was like if you're really about this life get the candle and call on some spirits and get it going you know what i mean like don't be a fake bitch and wear a fucking like <laughs> pentagram ring and not be practicing you know like i don't like that i think those people no. waste, waste my time I, alex i understand what you're saying and it kind of goes back to what we we're talking about my friends and slayer it's like what we're introducing to very young people is some very powerful shit that they may not be ready to handle. You know what really pissed, pissed me off about the whole Manson thing? Like, obviously, whatever. Uh, like it was very disappointing to go through all of that and to see all, everything that was happening with him in the media. But what really pissed me off is when the New York Post took uh, attributes from his book that he wrote with Neil Strauss, which was a New York Times bestseller, an iconic book. Millions of teenagers had it in their homes and then they tried to demonize it 20 years later and been and acted like we all did not have this information in our houses where he was talking about smoking human bones and taking teenage girls backstage and like torturing them. This stuff was printed by a mainstream publisher. This book has been out there. Like that's where I'm like, that's it's, it's fucked up how they do that. Like they try to rewrite history to fit the current narrative and act like, oh, we were all just so dumb that we all spent $20 on that book in 1998 and it became a New York Times bestseller and it was all over MTV and all over every fucking big newspaper in the world and in front of Barnes and Nobles. But yeah, now we're upset. Fuck that. That pisses me off. That seems to be pop culture, right? Because the thing you can never change is the past. So you can rail against it all you want because you know it's never going to get atoned. But they all participated. That's what pisses me off. Is like you went to Barnes and Nobles and bought that book to read Manson and Neil Strauss. You promoted this on fucking MTV on TRL, like right after the Backstreet Boys video. Why are you trying to act like you didn't do that and rewrite it, you know? And it makes me think like, maybe from what Isaac is saying, like maybe the occult agenda could have, it was so much more sly pre cancel culture. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, you can't hide it now. You, you can try to slip in a symbol into something now. And now you got people like Isaac who like have this wonderful show where they kind of break down what they're trying to show you showing everybody. So maybe they're like, okay, it's kind of like what the government did when they're like, 
you can use propaganda against the the, uh, the citizens of the United States. It's like, if we can't control it, let's flood it. Let's just flood it with everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. And we see these corporations, like, this is the first time in the history of business that I have seen corporations and businesses not catering to the desires of their customers. I've never seen this before. And it just makes you question whether all these businesses are legit businesses or are they just kind of like weapons of propaganda? We're like, yeah, they sell a bunch of stuff, but there's, I mean, Nike, right? Like how big is Nike? It's fucking huge. But when you compare it to like what? Oil companies, uh, pharmaceutical companies, banks, it's just a fucking lemonade stand. So like if they lose it, they lose it. Yeah, Bo Burnham. Did you, Sam? Did you watch the Bo Burnham special inside no, I on Netflix? No, really bad. Yeah, I've been it's trying to so get him to do good. it. Yeah, it's amazing. He has, whole, he has a whole song where he talks about this exact subject. Something to the effect of like, you know, oh, is wheat thins socially conscious enough for me to eat? You know, it's like kind of the argument. It's like that's. But is that also Bo Burnham like co-opting like like anti woke culture and like you know like think, it, it's like it's all so hard to like fucking reduce because it's all so fake you know what i mean yeah. like no one no one is really honest about their authentic values in this era like it's so constructed and so surface but i think what's interesting about what sam said is is like a good aspect of this era is is that you know um or corporations and these these type of people that you know expect us to just sit in front of the tv from nine to five and just like watch fucking wheat thins commercials or whatever like we have more information and more media and places like this podcast where people can simulate a different type of reality that isn't on mtv that isn't on cnn and i think that is ultimately what the goal was of occultism and magic in the beginning you know like if you look at like richard metzger or douglas rushkoff or these earlier occultists from the, from the late nineties, you know, who, who would talk about like questioning surfaces and all this type of stuff. They wanted the world where we could create our own media. But the difference is, is, is that there's a lot of stuff out there and not all of it is good. And I do think there is something powerful, but about having to prove your stripes to, and, and to get in uh, an Illuminati or a club, I do think, or a cabal. I don't think that's bad, especially when it comes to talent. Like, work for it. But you think secret societies are, are good ideas? Mm, mm, okay, yeah, maybe not. But I mean, like, a secret society of, like, like you know, the sh like, oh, you got me now, huh? Um, I, I, I don't know. I think, I think, no, I'm not saying a few people controlling the power is good, but I'm saying, like, at least, like, aesthetically, like, in the fashion industry and stuff like that, like, things used to be more beautiful. Like, there used to be more hot women, you know, in advertisements but doesn't and stuff that, like that. Uh, isn't that a, a, a group of people? Like, isn't that part of the psyop magic that's being done on people now with this? But some like of the psyop magic is beautiful. I think Kate Moss is beautiful. You know what I mean? Like, not all psyop magic is bad. Like, I think there's some, there's beauty in pop art. You know what I mean? There's something, there, there, there's even beauty in the man show. You know what I mean? Like, there's artistic value in, in anything that is in popular media if you can find it and if you feel that way. But a lot of the popular media today is really ugly and very horrible and very fake and very calculated and it's um, put towards a specific uh, and it has an agenda that doesn't fit everyone. This is what's kind of funny to me is, is like the the utopia that, that everyone thinks they're going to get because they see it on their Netflix new movies or whatever. They, they think, oh, well, this is our utopia. No, it's fucking not because only a few people agree with that utopia, not everyone. Okay, so that's kind of what I want to get into is like, uh, what is the purpose? So we'll, we'll step away from Victoria's Secrets because of Lex Wexner and the dark arts of that. Let's look at Sports Illustrated and the Sports Illustrated swimsuit there, uh, issue. It, when, when times were much more innocent, that was a big deal when that <laughs> came out. Being on the cover was a life changer. You became a level of woman where only like CEOs, a-list actors, third world dictators hit on you, right? Like the best of the best, <laughs> right? But now we see it's starting to change where we see 
women who, let's say, are much thicker. Not even like, like you not, know. Not Lizzo big, though. They're not there no, yet. No, not Lizzo big, but also not like, I like a thick chick. You know, like I'm talking like a little bit unhealthy or a trans woman. Who wants that? And why are they doing that? And it's what is specific, the energy? It's a specific amount of people who want that, who are usually liberals and they believe. But that, are they buying the, the magazine? The answer is no, they are not. They're not. They're not. They're so not. why do they but, do but that? The point is, that, but they want to infiltrate because they want everyone to think the same as them. That's really what it's about. And I think, you know, and I also don't feel like, you know, I don't agree with today's feminists that like, you know, I mean, you know, like Sports Illustrated or women who are feminine or express themselves in a sexually feminine way, like, which is why I think OnlyFans culture is good for society, like when women are expressing themselves like that, because I think that it's not um, objectification. I think it, if they're in control of it and they're presenting it and they're happy and they feel good as sex workers, I think that's good rather than this like feminist angle of like, oh, that's men objectifying women. That's not um, that's not real sexuality. Only, un <laughs> only unfuckable women think that. And for uh, being on Sports <laughs> Illustrated side, uh, they might just be trying to grow their audience in their eyes. That's what they would say. Here's the thing. That's what they would say. Everyone has failed. They that's, they don't. That's why they don't buy the magazine, but they can destroy the magazine. Yep. That they can wage these public publicity. You know, these publicity tours boycott Sports Illustrated because they don't have enough oversized women. That can destroy. Uh, I mean that. Tear it down. On it? Well, the, yeah, the yeah, sure is, it does. Yeah. That, that's the, We've that's seen the get, people get fired. That. People, so many people have lost their jobs from that. Of course, it can. All right. They, because they want everything to look one uniformative totalitarian way. This is the Gen Z utopia. Welcome. You have to agree with it or leave, which is just totally delusional. Because I don't know, Alex. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I like Generation Z. They really. Seem, I'll tell you why I like Generation Z because this push to be multicultural has worked, and now it's natural. Meaning. I see groups of young kids, white, they'll be white, Mexican, oh, yeah, black, no, that's Asian. Beautiful. That's beautiful. That's so, beautiful. Yeah. So now that they're all hanging out more, they are more open to talking shit to each other, being making fun of each other. So when these Generation Z people come to these comedy clubs, they're laughing more oh, than the, that's good. That's the that's millennials. Good. I didn't know that. It's the that's millennials. Good. The millennials are, the millennials. are hot it's garbage. It's me. It's me. Yes, it's me. Fuck you guys. Yes, it's me. Sorry, guys. I'm a millennial. Yeah. <laughs> so, so no, no, no. I just don't like the Gen Zers who like, uh, you know, like we're going to put a trigger warning on Clueless because they use the word <laughs> cake boy and that's offensive. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't like cake like, boy. I don't. I don't like. I don't like anyone of any generation who's trying to censor art and creative expression. I agree, Fuck dude. Off. Like you leave because we need all perceptions, even the things that make you uncomfortable, even the things you disagree with, so you can see the reality of what is happening. Be aware, Isaac. Rather than d in denial of it. Do you believe in that? There's white magic and black magic. Okay, so I think magic hold, on, hold on, let me ask Isaac and then you can jump in. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I think so. And obviously Alex probably he, he's a little more well versed on the magic world than I am, but um, you know, I think there's like a right hand path and a left hand path, right? Um, yeah, yeah. So I mean these are these yeah, are the go ahead, these are go like ahead. constructions <laughs> of like moral when you add morality into magic, right? So magic in itself is inherently just magic. So people add color into it by a choice and they want to organize it into something like the right hand path would be like, Oh, white magic, like new age, like positive thinking, visualizing white light, all that type of stuff. And then another person might think black magic is like doing a hex on someone or a curse on someone, or, you know, using lower vibrational demons from like the satanic Bible and then bringing them into the material world to give you things. And I've seen girls do that. Younger girls do that and their whole lives get fucked up and um, it's real. So it's just a way to organize it, but magic inherently does not have a color. It doesn't. I it's agree just with what that. it is. It's like well, a when gun. I read, mm -hmm. When I read through Alex's book, he and and correct me if I'm wrong, Alex, but like I seem to get a vibe that you embrace this sort of Freemasonic ideology of uh, you know, there's no good, there's no evil. It's just everything's morally neutral. And to me, like that 
is like a Gnostic idea. And it is Gnostic. Yeah. And, and again, it kind of goes into the idea that, well, you know, God might be the bad guy and he created this material sort of prison planet and Lucifer yep. was really trying to save us and give us this knowledge where man can mm. become God in his own right. And that's kind of like the vibe I get from the book is like you, that vibe and just saying, well, you know, use alchemy, use magic, and you can sort of create, make the world, the universe shift around the will of the practitioner, which is a very like kind of left-hand path idea. Uh, as I think that's your birthright. I think it's your yeah. birthright to, to use your the power of your will to get the things that you want in life i mean it, 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 that's why we have free will you know what i mean but i think uh what you're saying like adding in the Luc luciferianism and all that type of stuff i haven't really thought about all of that in correlation to what i was saying in that part of the book but i can understand how people can misinterpret it but the reality is is that unfortunately every fucking person on the planet has their own idea of what good and evil is. So we can't just say that's good, that's evil, because it's going to be different for every person, right? So yeah, there's, there's shades of gray, I, I suppose. Um, there's shades of gray. Like, obviously, I would never fucking sit there with a black candle and visualize someone in a car crash. But so, someone who is in a bad mood and is young and just discovering magic might do that. And they might put someone in a car crash and then they might have some really fucked up karma but there are also witches who believe karma is a social construct and that they can curse people and hex people and do whatever they want like it's it's a very like convoluted argument it is to me what i was trying to say with a gun is a gun itself is nothing it could be a paperweight mm. but depending on how somebody uses it makes it whether it's a a weapon of, of, of a crime or a weapon of protection. And that's yep. kind of, I guess, everything breaks down. Is there that's good? Is there evil? Every I guess that only comes down to what is the end result? If the end result is to ethnic, ethnically cleanse a bunch of people, I guess that becomes evil. Now, is perceived as evil. The person doing it, most likely he's in going, I'm exactly. committing exactly. evil. They're probably yeah. like, I'm doing this for the best of the people. It is interesting, though, that we all have this gun and some of us aren't willing to use it, you know? that I, Absolutely, absolutely. And that's what's so interesting to me is that's why I, I think people like madonna promoted my book because what she's saying is is like stop viewing me as different than you you can create what you want if you will it if you work hard enough if you have the persistency if you want to figure it out with magic with alchemy with kabbalah you can you can do these things and i guess that really turns people off because it because it makes because the problem is is that everyone thinks that power is evil and that power is bad and that anyone who is has power especially in this era you are sus. You are you are you are fucked, right? It's how you wield but, it, right? Nobody well, thinks Bill Murray's a, a evil <laughs> fuck and he's got yeah. a ton of power. Bill Murray could walk almost into any movie and be like, I want to roll on this. People are like, oh shit. But isn't good. isn't prayer a form of wielding uh, you know, this this yeah, force? For sure. I mean and, and for I, sure. I think that's a that's a much more palatable way for many people. To I think it's come how this, people this use their power. Well, prayer. That, yeah, I wrote a whole chapter about that in the book about how prayer is a form of magic, and and that that you know when we pray, we're essentially doing a ritual, right? But but this is the thing is is that people who are praying usually are coming from this place of humility and like like oh like god help me like this like i'm i have no ego like serve me god like i am just a humble servant right but people who are doing magic are like visualizing with the candle being like my power me and look that i say in the book that you know I, I learned the hard way in my earlier magic days that, you know, too much ego and too much uh, belief that you are the, the wielder of your reality can make you go a little crazy. And I think that happened to Manson. I think he fell in love with the illusion of the entity Marilyn Manson that Brian Hugh Warner evoked upon the world. And he believed in it. He believed in everything to into it to the point where he became a slave to it. And he would just charge all of his energy and give to it would maybe with the intentions of good because he did, you know, pre being canceled, he, he did inspire and help a lot of artists and young people and change their lives, you know, but 
Um, and we can't erase his influence on popular culture and what he did for the world. But, you know, I think a big, a big problem is, is that people fall in love with the illusion of, I mean, Sam's probably seen this in Hollywood with all of his celebrity friends is that like, if you fall in love with this illusion of, of this photocopied Xerox version of yourself, you're going to go fucking crazy. I, I totally agree with that. And with the death of, the industry slowly but surely dying. You're seeing these people realize that everything they had was just a sandcastle and they're scrambling because, <laughs> because there's going to be a time where uh, having a Netflix special will be the same as having a Comedy Central special. No oh, one yeah, will care. 100%. No you're, one will care. On and that. once that happens, that. The, the system is completely done. Uh, but yeah, man, I understand what you're saying, dude. You know, Marilyn Manson did things to me that, you know, when in hindsight, I go, ah, you know, man, I get it. It's like, it's, it's racy. It's edgy. It's like when you walk into like Utah and you start ripping up Bibles, right? You're like, <laughs> what, what are we doing? What is that energy? What is that energy you're creating? These are people paying to buy your tickets. And listen, dude, I'm an outlaw, right? I'm an outlaw when it comes to yeah. comedy. Don't get me wrong, dude. I love rattling cages. I love yeah. spitting my truth and watching people come to grips that dude just said what he wanted to say. I love that, okay? But the ripping of a Bible, I don't really care, but it's like you are doing a certain thing to evoke a certain re uh, response, right? Yeah, I yeah, because but he was also, I think, like in, similarly to Isaac, he was trying to liberate people because remember back then, you know what I mean? Like it, there was not a lot of representation of weird people and freaks and creepy people like him who felt different and goths and all this type of stuff. And here Manson comes on the scene and makes like every kid who's felt different feel a sense of resonance and yeah maybe they took it to the extreme with cutting their wrists and fucking ripping up bibles and doing black magic but in the end of it what he was trying to say is it's okay to be different it's okay to be weird it's okay but that's most people get I over understand. that in adolescence i think but, teach their own i thought you weren't going to approve of him removing his rib i mean dude that if you could blow happened. yourself <laughs> blow yourself right. i will never judge you somebody for trying to I just know. that didn't happen be the Surely. ultimate like off the grid right there's Irvin no legend. more off the grid than removing a rib and i, and I don't support own. what he what he what he did or well, anything here, here's the irony of this whole thing though <laughs> he ripped up the book of mormon and ironic which is completely not the bible it's joseph smith's shit that non -fic anyway. fiction book yeah and um the irony is that joseph smith was practicing magic and he channeled an entity so like marilyn manson was was basically provoking the Mormons, you know, making fun of their book when it's like, yeah, bro, like that's the shit you do too, homeboy. Like he's very he smart. All right, shit. dude. Point. Marilyn Manson. Point. Devil point. Point. Don't know Marilyn Manson. None of these devil worshippers know what they're talking about. They're just full of it. They're just trying to get a reaction. All right, I respect that. That's a great point. That's a great point. Because their logic falls apart all the time. They don't know that they're following this path. Yeah. You know? But I get, I get, also get what Sam is saying too. Like there are other people out there who can tell you to challenge the world around you and to think different, and and they're on PBS at like eight PM or something like that. But Manson did it in a very like narcissistic. I mean, he put the reaction way. That's all I'm saying. At, he I put mean, the editor of Spin at gunpoint because he wanted the cover. Yeah, I mean that is. Oh damn, did he? And I'm down with that too. I mean, I retract my statement about Marilyn Manson. He's an all right guy. Okay. Yeah, I actually <laughs> like. I mean, like you should be his PR like guy. I'm shit. going around like, dude's got gun, removing ribs. He's like living my dream, bro. <laughs> He's living my dream. So I think I, I mean, like, I didn't know if the, now. Let me ask some. Was this episode brought on by any kind of disagreement? Was there something Isaac was talking about with your book, Alex? Is that no, what because I think that that. that displaying this polarity of discussion is important to the, the mutual values of what we both do. Though we disagree and we're different, there is a common denominator in the same way that Isaac tells people to look around and find the rhythms, coincidences, patterns of things. Like, you know, fuck, I was fucking around, I was like 16 when the Illuminati conspiracy theory videos started to come out on YouTube and like 
all of our friends would like huddle around and be like the Rihanna video would be slowed down and they would show the triangle and all that type of stuff. And that was like a real cultural moment of, of kind of waking up to be like, why do I sit and watch the Hills for 20 minutes every week? You know what I mean? Like, why am I consuming MTV? Like, what did it mean when I saw Britney in the baby one more time video in the school girl skirt when I was five or six, you know what I mean? Like I started to wake up a little bit. But what yeah. uh, from both of your perspectives, why are those symbols in those videos? It's a revelation of the method, I think. I think this all, and, and it's the same reason why, uh, you know, and again, no offense to Alex, I actually respect Alex. I, I, we, we were in communications yeah, uh, a year and a half ago. Yeah, we respect each other. We're, yeah. we're out here. I, yeah, we were I talking think about this a year is a and great discussion. Online. Yeah, I think it's a great discussion. It's fascinating. And this is, and, and again, like I'm, it, it, the messed up deal is like I'm more fascinated and intrigued by the occult and trying to understand all these concepts. Like they're very fast. They resonate heavy with me, which uh, I'm drawn to like dark stuff. So like that's concerning for me. But uh, I do see, I, I think this is part of revelation of the method to see all these symbols and sigils. And uh, I, like we talked about the Madonna Quavo video. I think like that's all that and, and Alex's book, they get put in the forefront because the, the powers that be know there's a path to take humanity. Our subconscious mind. And even the subconscious mind might, I don't know. Like, this goes all the way back to the book of Enoch with the, the fallen angels, you know, teaching man about alchemy and these magical arts. Uh, so on some levels. Are you talking about is, John D? No, back uh, the, the fallen angels, um, the watchers in the okay. Bible, like, you know, like thousands of years ago, like the, the book of Enoch talks about how they taught the forbidden arts of magic and alchemy to man. And that was one of the reasons why, why God created the, the great deluge and, and flooded them all out. Well, magical practitioners use Enochian magic today to get the things that they yes. want. Yeah. John they D. Still, right. Yeah. Yeah. John D. So people yeah. still use those symbols and sigils like yes. Damien could, Eccles does that. Yes. That because, because that's, that, that's right. kind of my shtick on it. My take on it is all of this magic stuff, I believe takes you all the way back to the roots of evil. And like, Look, like I don't care that I don't care if people do this or not. Like I'm gonna be dead in X amount of years, and like, what do I care? You know, it doesn't bother me. Do what you want to do. Um, but I'm just saying, I think there's a coordinated agenda to push us down this path, and this goes back to Helena Blavatsky and Alistair Crowley and a million globalists who With the Golden this. Dawn. Golden Dawn. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, the Golden Dawn's part of it, right? Uh, I think Ferguson. you're right that it, that it takes us back to the roots, the roots of something. I don't know if it's evil, but it's it's the roots of something and it's mysterious. But I think it know. is because Blavatsky, she was talking, who was very revelation of the methody and all this stuff. You know, she was very Gnostic and she was very clear about how Satan was the benefactor of mankind and the serpent was the real God. And, you know, like all these. It's, but, uh, maybe, Parsons, but maybe it could be from an stuff. intellectual, like Jungian point of view of like Satan being an archetype of like the outlaw and the outsider, you know, like that's, that's the, th that's the thing that that also people misinterpret too, because you like when the kid who's like 15, 17 and they're, you know, maybe reading my book and they're like, you know, I'm going to evoke Satan. I'm fucking bored. You know what I mean? And they're going to do they, what they could be doing. Right. Personally, this is what I believe. And what I say in the book is, is that I think they're vibrating with someone in the spirit world, a lower vibrational spirit. Who's like, I can take on that role for him. I'll be his Satan. And then He's created Satan and this archetype. And, but I don't think there's like one Satan. Like, I don't think there's like one Satan. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't believe in that. I think that's too, um, you know, Abrahamic and Christian. That's the whole thing. Like, it's like, there's so many layers and so many just things going on. You just don't know what's real. Isaac, a final question I just want to get into from a Christian point of view. Where does near-death experiences fit into, you know, these Orthodox religions? You know, I don't know as far as like the Greek Orthodox Church's standpoint on it. My personal belief uh, is that I think we get glimpses of, like, I think, and this sounds almost a little Gnostic, I think our souls, our spirits go inside of our body to experience this version of reality, this world, and our five senses are filters, and the filters sort of strip out all these parts of the electromagnetic fre frequency spectrum. And when we die or have a near-death experience or do hallucinogens, perhaps it, it it messes with those filters, and you can 
access these other sort of frequencies. And I think I would, I believe that when, when we die, it's basically stripping out all those filters and boom, you're off like a rocket. And now you're in this other dimension, this other realm, which I, well, I, why I believe it, Alex's book, why I believe in magic, because I, I think it's toying with these things in another dimension. I, well, Isaac, I want to ask you a question. Why do you think, everyone has incarnated what do you think the point of do you think they do you think they that we've incarnated isaac of course we've been incarnated yes well i know you believe that i'm asking if isaac believes yeah isaac what do you think like why do you think why are we here i don't believe in reincarnation uh why because the the because uh my church tells me so that's the only reason why you know like i don't know I don't really I think, know. I think uh, but like, the, to, the reason I think we're incarnated on this realm is to, I, I don't know, God made us in his image. So, you know, as the story goes, and it's like a way of, I mean, there's beautiful things on this earth too, just as, a, as well as nasty. And there's this sort of balancing of sometimes you're, sometimes you're way up, sometimes you're down bad and you got to like sort of ride this wave and understand that, uh, you know, there's good and bad in this world and kind of experience that you can have the good without the bad. And, you know, something well, from, like a, that. From, from a Kabbalah point of view and like a magical point of view, like the most advanced form of magic would say that we incarnated here to work through our negative traits mm-hmm. and to alchemize them into positive traits and to work through all of our negativity and everything that, you know, makes us imperfect and, and to correct that and to, 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 to change. And, and life is about evolution and transformation. And it's this like Scorpio experience of constantly evolving, constantly going to the next level, constantly climbing the tree of life. And I, I believe that from, from studying Kabbalah and, you know, the Sephirah and the tree of life and all that type of stuff. And David Bowie even talks about it in his song station to station. He goes from Malhut to Kether, you know, and I think, um, I think that's personally my belief, but I don't know what Christians feel about it. I mean, do they feel like they have to, they're here to change, to become the image of God? I feel like that's no different than what I'm talking about. Right. And, and, and I've, I've, thought those things many times about like just one example is prayer versus meditation. Like it's, it's, it's the focus of who you're asking for assistance with. Right. Like when I'm going through troubles, like I'll say a prayer to God, but I also will do some mindful meditation because I don't know, because the killer's inside the house, right? Like my own mind is, is a, my brain can fill my head with toxic thoughts that aren't true. So like I'm not the kind cognitive of cognitive distortions. Like, yeah, there you go. That's a better word for it. Yeah, but like cognitive the, distortions. The, 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 I'm not so Christian, quote unquote, that I think, oh, you just send it all to God in a prayer and that's all you do. Like I just don't believe that. Like there's tools you can use that aren't worshiping the devil that could, you know, help you work through some stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, and I think I But I, I stopped short at, I stopped short at contacting entities, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. And I feel like also I want to I would shit something. my pants if I had contacted an entity. I would <laughs> shit my pants. <laughs> You've never been abducted by an alien? No, dude, but like if an entity just threw here and started like talking to me, I would just go, oh, oh my, my God. God. T- tall grays are so cold. Oh, like shit. they're so Alex, cold. Alex, have you heard of instances like he's describing where, where contact is, is that obvious with, with entities? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, uh, really? yeah, of course. People have had um, smoke appear, you know, thing, like things in the material world change instantly. Uh, like you can, you can uh, people have done evocations um, for, for angels and then have had certain dreams that coincide with the color of the angel. Like there's all these crazy synchronicities. Like there are spirits and entities out there to work with. Everyone mostly Christians believe that anyone who's doing that is being deceived by the devil, but other people live very happy, full lives working with spirits and angels and, and, um, and, and all of that, because I think it takes a certain person to say, how the fuck could I be in this universe? And, and just say, yeah, this is all there is. It's just solipsism and materialism and there's nothing past this. I mean, no, I mean, why do so many addicts like, get better when they surrender to a higher power, they bring a higher power in. It's because people would say the pursuit of addiction is trying to transcend the material world, trying to to receive a spiritual experience because you're just keeping on going on the treadmill until you, you reach that perfect high. But what if the spirit world can give you that right away? 
Would voodoo and Santeria be considered dark magic? It's not dark religion? magic. No. Voodoo, Santeria uh, um, is, is magic and it's very traditional. And it kind of shows you that, you know, in our Western culture that like we have all these fear-based Christian views of magic, but you fucking go anywhere else in the world. And they're like, yeah, I've removed this hex. I did. I just, the blood moon was last month. You know what I mean? Like it just goes to show you that like our North American, like Viacom society is so, you know, removed from spirit, removed from spirituality. Yeah, those Greeks believe in that evil eye, like like they say it's Mati. and stuff. It's very serious to them. Yeah, yeah, Mati. Yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm I grew up Greek Orthodox. Oh, no. <laughs> Plot twist. <laughs> One yeah, interesting was this a debate? Would you say this was a debate? No. This is just a conversation. Friendly, friendly discussion. Because yeah. they kind of get on, they agree on most things. Yeah. It's just not it everything. It's interesting. We can uh, try it again. We can make it more entertaining. No, no, like, no, no, no. This is great. No. I had a great time. I could listen to you guys talk all day. If I didn't have a Big time. baby's mama, I had to go and see my kids. I'd sit here all day with you guys. Wonderful show. Uh, real quick, Isaac, tell them where they can find you. Uh, my stuff is at, so IlluminatiWatcher.com is the website. I'm on Instagram at Isaac Weishaupt. And you can listen to one of my podcasts called Conspiracy Theories in Unpopular Culture everywhere you can find podcasts. Uh, that's the flagship show. And then I've got other shows I do on Rockfin. So if you're on Rockfin, hit me on Rockfin. I'm at Isaac. Uh, I've also got a Patreon, patreon.com slash Illuminati Watcher until they ban me. So thank you. Nice. Alex, talk to me. Where can they find you? I have no social media accounts, so you can um, – Go to the website, P-O-P-M-A-G-I-C-K.com and okay, alexkazemi.com. Magic with a K. Uh, yeah, yeah, magic with a K. And then alexkazemi.com. And you and if you like this episode, write me a letter. I love to hear letters from people. I'm very 1997 that way. But yeah, no social media accounts. But um, even if you don't you know, want to practice magic, I think my book is a good way to show you what is happening. And if you're curious about what is happening in witchcraft and magic and what it is. It's a good reference point to learn. All right, guys. A uh, wonderful conversation. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, we're going to be putting out a special episode on Friday, everybody. If everything goes according to plan, we're going to be doing a swarm tank. <laughs> and then next week we're taking off. So we're going to have a week off, everybody. So go back and uh, listen to some old episodes or something like that. Do we well, have, we have, we have Mon- one episode. Yeah, right? we have one more Monday. And then the fo- after that, what, the next one, the next two shows, we won't be doing two shows. So uh, a little break's coming up because I have to go home for my old ass reunion and see some friends. So... I love you guys very much. I hope you enjoyed the last couple episodes because it's been pure fire. And uh, again, check us out on Rockfin and go to samtriply.com for all your video. And uh, yeah, check out everything. Check me out on Rockfin. Check out the t-shirts. Check everything. And we love you very much. Take care, everybody. We go deep, homeboy. Aaron, open your mind. Drink. From the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Tim foil hack, tin foil hack.